Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch and welcome today to the peel and reveal of yet another budget buy. A big, chunky, full-sized, full-fat, full-flavoured dive watch with a Swiss automatic movement in it for 199 US dollars. Yep, less than 200 bucks for a Solita SW200 powered dive watch. Now I had a look back through my not inconsiderable back catalogue and I couldn't find anything this cheap. The brand? Perhaps you've guessed it already. Perhaps you bought one yourself last week. The brand is Deep Blue. A brand that has been on my radar for years, but this is the first time I get to check one out directly. Now these aren't Swiss made, no one is claiming that today. They're undoubtedly Chinese made, but in these times of inflation and crazy price hikes on pretty much everything, a sub $200 Salita powered diver is a bit of a bargain. A bargain that is, if the watch is any good. So, is it any good? Let's flip the camera and find out. So, $199, Swiss Automatic, Salita 200, what's the catch? I mean, have a look on eBay. You'll find the cheapest SW200 there is $189. So that is the entire rest of this watch, the dial, the hands, the glass, the case, the crown, the bezel insert, the case back, and the strap, all for 10 bucks. Surely there must be some compromises. If so, what are they? And why haven't I reviewed Deep Blue before? No compromises with the packaging though. This is perfectly decent for $200. Not particularly flash, but it'll do. Kept it safe in transit. Little travel pouchy here. Plenty of foam and plenty of extras. They claim to be a kind of hardcore divers brand. This is nice, a little tag removed before diving. There's a sticker. I'm not going to complain about that. What else have we got? A polishing cloth and a 12 month warranty. Now, despite the fact that I bought this from Deep Blue directly in the States, they didn't bother signing or dating the warranty card. No bracelet though, so I guess that is our first official compromise here today. One is available, but it is $269, not the headline grabbing $199, which is why I went for this one. Also, it's a big boy. I think a rubber strap helps a, a big watch fit a better variety of wrists than a bracelet otherwise would. As I said, it is a big boy, 44 mil in diameter, bang on 15 mil thick with a 52.5 lug tip to lug tip, 22 mil lugs and on the supplied rubber strap, 134 grams. Goodness knows how much this one would weigh on a bracelet. It would probably be pushing 200. 316L stainless steel case, crown and bezel. Screw down crown, it's a nice chunky grippy crown as well, no problems there. Guarded well, 300 meters of water resistance, perhaps that's one reason why this one is extra thick and to confirm that extra diving utility, helium escape valve on the nine o'clock side. Case finish is very, very simple though. High polish on the side, not a particularly fine brush on the upper surfaces. Really that crown is the highlight and the bezel itself, very thin, also high polish, not particularly grippy. 120 click, yeah, the action is okay at best. No back play, but there is quite a lot of bounce with this one. Not the best bezel I've seen, to be honest. I'll give them some credit for the sapphire crystal though. Must be reasonably thick given the water resistance rating. As you can see, plenty of blue anti-reflective coating there. And it is slightly domed. You can see probably a different doming on the upper and lower surface, so you get that distortion from certain angles, but yeah, not bad at all. The rubber strap's all right though, thick and chunky, which suits the watch, but still quite soft and supple. Now it does look like it's one that's gonna attract some lint and fluff, so do be aware of that. Deep blue logo, once and twice, and decent hardware. Brushed to match the upper surfaces of the watch, etched with the deep blue logo, and it's fitted. I think a fitted rubber strap takes a watch to the next level, a good thing, and again, not one you'd expect for this money. But the star of this package is undoubtedly the movement visible through that shiny, shiny case back there. Now it is mineral crystal exhibition case back. I did test it, so it's not a sapphire sandwich, but again, for 200 bucks, I'm not complaining. Screw on. Plenty of specs around the outer edge, including a limited edition number. These are limited to 5,000 pieces of each color variant. This is number 134, perhaps. This will be trading at a premium in years to come. Uh, perhaps not. The SW200-1 is a great movement, though. A Swiss-made clone of the ETA 2824. Slita used to make movements for ETA. They've been making this one in their own right since the 1990s. 26 joule hacking and hand-winding, bi-directional winding, roughly 40-hour power reserve, and stated tolerances of plus or minus 30 seconds per day from the factory. And that will do nicely for $200. 
Thanks very much. But if you want compromises today, just look at the dial, the hands and the bezel insert of this one, the Speedograph 1000. Perhaps one idea that should have stayed at the idea stage. I know, let's take one of our big chunky three-handers, give it a couple, only a couple mind you, of elements from 1970s style chronographs and call it the Speedograph. Uh, thanks Kevin, you can uh, sit down now mate. And those elements actually detract from its use as a dive watch. Have a look at that bezel. One, two, three, four, five. I have never seen that on a bezel before and I can see no good reason that I should ever see it again. And then there's the minute track. It has that fussy alternating back and forth look found on 1970s style chronos. It serves no purpose on a diver though other than to make reading the minutes harder. Oh dear. And the date window is small. So small that when you're in the 20s, it looks crushed. I like the colours though, so it's not all bad. Black, white, yellow, at least it's all legible and nice and crisply done. But the simple flat fence post hands I think could have done with beefing up a little. So dial, hands, bezel insert, compromises. Definitely. No compromises on the loom though. I must say I was quite impressed. Not an awful lot on the printed dial, but the hands and the bezel insert keep things moving along nicely. The choice of Arabics looks even weirder after dark though, don't they, that one to five. On wrist it wears okay though, particularly on this rubber strap. It is very much a full size, full fat diver. Slab sided very much like the Tudor Black Bay, 52 and a half lug to lug perhaps pushing it a little bit, perhaps stretching the friendship on my average size seven inch left wrist. But it does look a little more appropriate, I think, on my seven and a quarter inch right wrist. It does come down to personal preference though. I kind of max out at 42 and 50 lug to lug. I don't tend to stray much beyond that myself. So know what suits you. And if this suits you, then go for it. Hands could be bigger, but overhead legibility isn't too bad at all, thanks in part to the size of this thing at 44 mil, thanks also in part, I'm sure, to that blue AR coating on the sapphire, which is also clearly evident when I take this one outside in natural light. You do get a pretty clean read of the dial and hands though from most angles. On wrist, fitted rubber strap, definitely doing its best to keep this one wearable. 135 grams is okay, but yeah, it's a big and chunky watch. Looking down the wrist, you can see what I mean, the Tudor Black Bay reference, very slab sided, but there is noticeable downturn from the tips of those lugs. Overall, it's a big watch, but it wears fairly well for it. And the pocket shot to finish, I'm in a jumper today, folks, just back from my holiday in Cairns, which was very much shorts and t-shirts weather, to 14 degrees today in Sydney, brr. So moans and niggles, well, everything I've mentioned so far, very unusual mix of 70s chrono and chunky three-hand diver, including that bezel nomenclature, very odd indeed. Rubber strap is comfortable, but it is going to fluff up, as you can see there. It has done so on mine already, and a date complication that will be better to read on some days than on others. But my biggest complaint about this one is I don't think it's aligned properly. I think the whole dial is squint to the right hand side. If I line the loom pip up with the bezel at 12 as I have done, I think the three is sitting off to the right. Have a look at the horizontal axis. I think the markers on the bezel are sitting to the south of the markers on the dial. I think the whole thing is squint to the right. This is why I haven't reviewed deep blue watches before. About four and a half years ago, I reviewed a watch from a micro brand who shall remain nameless. One of their early models, the one I got was okay, but they told me they were changing factories because they weren't happy with the quality control. The factory they were using at the time also made deep blue watches and I have been suspicious of them ever since. And finally getting one in hand for the first time and getting a distinct feeling that everything's a little bit wonky doesn't really fill me with confidence I'm afraid either. Perhaps you will get a good one, perhaps I was unlucky, this is only one item in my first encounter with the brand after all. But perhaps there is a catch, perhaps there are inevitable compromises that have to be made to get a cracking Swiss made automatic movement in a watch for only $199. Surely costs have been saved elsewhere, and I think in this case it's fairly evident to see where those costs have been saved. Thanks for watching, I will see you in a future video.